I know the feeling of sending out text, an email, and then sitting there in anxiety, wondering, overthinking, how come the person hasn't texted back? Start to wish that you can take back what you sent. Start running all these scenarios in your head about all the negative possibility that it can happen. The feeling of trusting someone with your secret. Be so vulnerable to them, but yet wondering if they are judging you or spreading your secret behind your back. I understand the struggle of blaming yourself, wishing you can go back on time to fix what happened, or posting and deleting any status, pictures, or posts on social media because you are doubting yourself of your own decision so regularly that you stop trusting yourself. I understand the struggle of overthinking. In today's video, I'd like to dive deep into the subject of overthinking. Coming from a formal overthinker, I still catch myself overthinking at times. We would start with, why are you overthinking? Because I like to dig deep. I'm a strong believer in you must build a strong foundation. Just like building a house, growing a tree, the deeper the roots, the stronger the house and the tree. And then we're going to why is overthinking so bad for us? When you can actually overthink and it's good for us. How to stop letting overthinking ruin in your life. Hi friend, it's Delilah. Welcome to my corner. Let's dive right in. As usual, here are the chapters. First, let's talk about where overthinking come from. In this session, I like to bring five reasons why you are overthinking and one dark reason why. First thing, I am a chef. Sometime before when I first start cooking, I was not confident in my cooking. So I always make sure to reach out for the customer and ask for feedback. Don't get me wrong, asking for feedback is really good, especially when you are looking to thrive and get better. But here's the thing, if you always reach out and you always ask for feedback, they will think that you are not confident. And sometimes people are busy. They don't respond to my text or take them two days to respond. I would freak out and thinking that something is wrong with my cooking. I just keep going to this cycle in my head of overthinking. Let's say I think that I might season it a little bit too strong. I constantly think, oh my God, everyone is thinking it's so salty. And it ended up would give me stress over something that is not even true because People would text me back a few days later, hey, I'm so busy, sorry to respond, but it was great, we all enjoyed it. So what was the stress for? First thing is perfectionism. When you expect perfectionism, you would never happy with the thing you do and you will continuously overthink. Nothing will ever be good enough. It could be better. Only if you get to redo it again, you do this and this instead. It's exhausting. You're driving yourself crazy. So. The second one I like to talk about is similar to perfectionism, but bad in its own way. You want to control the situation. It's like you want to control the person to text you back, control how they feel about you. If they like you, they respect you, they should text you back. They won't make you wait like that. In your mind, you can only go in circle around the story involving you. You can't think or even allow yourself to think of a situation or something come up that slow them down from responding to you. For example, watch this. No! So, so gross. She's mad at you. No, she's not. Because you told her that you don't like her best friend. Duh. It has nothing to do with her. She always texts back. If she doesn't text back, you know she's mad. I don't believe this. <laughs> I told you so. Maybe I did offend her. Let me try and make it up. Oh, hello? Hi, babe. Sorry, I missed your birthday. What happened to My you? My phone fell down the toilet. And then I had to go camping two hours after. Today, I just got a new phone. But what's up with that text? I thought you were mad at me. Don't be silly. I'm not petty like that. Okay, babe. I told you so. Get out of my head. That leads to the next one. 
When you constantly think about how to get people to like you, how to make other people happy, you are constantly in the hamster wheel of overthinking. People pleaser of what you can do. And if you don't get what you want, then you start overthinking of how to get their approval. You sunk into even more people pleasing and overthinking at the same time. This type of overthinker or low self-esteem insecurity and spotlight effect they always think that oh my gosh everyone's looking at me and they judging me and they are thinking i am this way i am that way i think i was in spotlight effect for the longest time everywhere i go i'm thinking people are thinking about me and judging me maybe i'm the one who's insecure and judging myself because if you are confident and you believe in yourself You will not be insecure and overthinking. Even when you don't achieve the result that you want, you know that you'll do it again and it's okay to make mistakes. Even when you didn't do your best, it doesn't reflect who you are. Mistake doesn't define you because you keep evolving. You don't just live in anxiety. Worry about something that has already been said, an action that already been done. You can't take it back. Now, let's go into the dark side of overthinking. Vietnamese have a quote, Suy bụng ta ra bụng người. I think it's very interesting. Whatever you think about the other person, you think that that person is thinking the same of you. You are reflecting, projecting yourself on other people. You assume that. You try to think of the worst and then you start to think that's probably what they're thinking right now. And then it will drive you crazy from trying to using your mind to think of somebody else's mindset. You know, there are some people that I've noticed that they don't trust themselves. So they don't trust others. So they start overthinking about what other people could have done to them. About how their partner could cheat on them. How they would be unfaithful or not loyal to them. That's because that's who they are. A little bit on the dark side, and I know not everyone is like that, but I just want to point out to you, that is one case of dark side about why people overthink. There are a million reasons why you couldn't trust others. I get it. It is not your fault at time, especially because of your upbringing and what you've been through, which we will talk about it later. But we are here to dig it out and work on it. So I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. You see the darkness in others because you have that darkness in you. Let me take an example. Let's say you share a dark, deep secret with your friend. And then you are scared that she's going to judge you for it. Or she's going to spread your secret. Check it to see if you would do the same. If you would tell her secret to somebody else or you are so scared that you can't be real to them. So you overthink everything. You're scared that they are judging you. Are you judging them? Ask yourself that. Do you question their loyalty? Because you are not fully loyal to them either. Now that you know the Ruth, let's start planting the tree. Let's go into why is overthinking bad for you and when overthinking is actually good for you. Imagine worrying about everything. Living in such anxiety that when you spend time with your friends, your family, or on vacation, and in your mind you can't stop thinking about what already happened or what could have happened. You build up the scenario when you should enjoy the present moment with your loved one. Isn't it so tiring? You know, the problem may be not even real. It's not even there. But you can't stop dragging yourself from that and be in the present moment. You know, we talk about kids and we're like, oh, they live the darnest life. They don't worry about everything or anything. I was an overthinking kid. Even when I was seven, eight, nine years old, I just remember that I find things, I dig things out to worry about. I'm not sure what was up with me, but I constantly always overthink, even as a young child. And you know what's crazy? It shows on my face. When you overthink, you always like this. In your mind, you always have this anxiety look, and it will show on your face. So I grew up, and until I, I think in my 30 this is how my face look I'm 
I always look angry. Where it's like, what's on your mind? Are you okay? There's another quote in Vietnamese, Tâm Sinh Tương. It's basically whatever is inside your mind, it will show out to your body and your face. That's why I guess it's similar to beauty reflect from the inside. When you constantly overthink, you will question everything and everyone around you, every situation, every process. It's impossible for you to surrender and trust, to trust in the process and to believe in good things that will happen your way. To relax and to see the goods in others. Lucky this wasn't my case because for some reason I have really good friends growing up. But because I was so in a bubble that I think everyone is like that until I start to explore more out of my circle. And I start seeing other people and I'm like, oh my gosh, people can really be messed up to their friends and everything so i wouldn't say i'm overthinking when it comes to friends maybe i don't think enough but love yes i overthink a lot whenever i start talking to someone or dating someone crazy i know people who live in doubt 24 7 they always defensive and they always questioning everything and everyone you know it could slow down your growth it's like while everybody out there is taking the opportunity to make things happen in their life, taking the chances, you're over here creating all these negative scenarios that would happen. So you never go for the opportunity. You never take the chance and then you always be behind. I can't remember how many times this happened to me because of my overthinking. Listen, if you are overthinking, you are going to procrastinate. Just take the damn step. Worry about it later. It will make you doubt yourself. Imagine leading in life with overthinking. With all the choices and all the decisions. It's like letting doubt take over your life. What do you think you would be? The same exact place. Self-doubt is the worst enemy of the process. It leads to you're not trusting yourself and others. So how can you have a partner or have a business when you can't trust anybody? And when you can't even trust yourself, what makes you think other people can trust you? How do you expect the universe to give you, to hand you the opportunity that you've been manifesting for when you all you do is overthink about what could go wrong? Let's talk about when can we actually overthink. Hmm. I like to call this cautious especially before a relationship it's okay to overthink before you get into the relationship but don't assume anything allow the person to show themselves to you how they truly are prove themselves to you before taking an opportunity that's a good time to overthink let's say you have to quit this job to take the opportunity then you need to really sit down and weigh it down write out the pros and cons to see if it's worth it for you to take the opportunity you know because this is taking a risk so you have to be realistic with yourself but don't assume the worst before you even make a decision if you like this video so far please hit that like button so the video can send out to more people in need the overthinking people who need to stop overthinking and the next thing is against what i used to believe is planning for the worst so you expect the best in every situation but you have to have a backup plan just in case something bad can happen so it's completely okay to overthink just make sure you are doing something about it to protect yourself for the better not just overthink and do nothing about it let's talk about how to stop overthinking first thing as usual you must be aware and catch yourself you can do this with more meditation because when you meditate you are in the present moment so you'll pay attention to where your thought go and you can really catch yourself when you are overthinking let's say when you have a thought that is overthinking don't judge it don't agree with it just accept it watch it move forward and realize that it's just a thought and let it pass you can write it down, journal it down to release the thought, the emotion. I do that all the time. I swear it works. You don't have to act on the thought. Just remember that we have so many thoughts a day. Imagine acting on every thought. This world would be a crazy place. Next thing is work on your confidence. 
A person who's more confident will be less overthink because they will trust in their own instinct, their decision making and their choices. So I will make another video about how to gain your confidence. You can detach yourself from overthinking and that lead to the next one, having the so what attitude. When you allow mistake and you are confident in yourself, you always have that attitude of so what? Okay, it didn't turn out right. So what? I made a mistake. I learned from it. So what? I'll do better next time. I like to also add, sorry, <laughs> editing the video with my mask on, trying to get my beauty care in. If they don't respond to you and they ignore your text and you feel frustrated inside, be firm that you didn't do anything wrong, that you did your best. Be confident in yourself and have that so what attitude on this too. So keep a so what attitude when you are practicing on how to stop overthinking. Remember this, we are always changing. Someone out there will always keep an old image of us being the same way and you don't have to affirm to that. You don't even have to explain yourself about why you changed or how you changed. They could hug that image of you, go to sleep and dream about you while you're moving up in life, no longer that person. When you allow mistake, you give yourself a chance to grow. Next thing is, not everyone and everything is about you. I promise you. People are so busy with their own life and they are in their own mind a lot that even if they think about you, it's not more than one or two minutes. And even if they gossip and talk about you, let them. What you need to do is focus on your growth and you can level yourself up then just let them be cricket talking behind your back. Keep yourself so busy on your growth that you have no chance or no time to sit there and overthink and worry about what anybody think of you. If there's any spotlight you should be, pay attention to you only. Worry about your own spotlight. Don't worry about being anybody else's spotlight. Remember to ask yourself this. Can you do anything about it? About the overthinking? You can't. So what's the point of overthinking? Let it go. Can you change it? Can you go back to the past and redo it again? No. What can you do being over here and overthinking? What is that going to help? It's just going to hurt you mentally and make you so tired all the time. Draining from your own thoughts. I hope that helped. There was so much that I wanted to share with you. We cover from the psychology of why we are overthinking. The dark reason why. Why is it bad for us and how to stop letting overthinking take over our life and when is actually a good time to overthink. I know that was a lot, but I'm positive that it will help you. Please support my channel by hitting that subscribe button, like and leave in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Sending you so much love and a peace of mind. If you like this video, please watch this one next. It's time to say goodbye to overthinking for good. I'm counting on you. See you in the next video. Bye. Love you.